Hi, everybody. Welcome back to The Reason We Learn. I'm Deb Fellman, mom, homeschooler, educator. I am blessed with some of the best subscribers and commenters ever, um, not just here on YouTube, but also in my locals community. And after my last video, my little rant from the car about canceling George Washington and others from our history, I received several fantastic suggestions as I was in the car and speaking off the cuff. I forgot a few people from history who deserve more scrutiny. And it is noteworthy they're not getting it because it points to the real reason people like George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and Thomas Jefferson are. So first, before I get into that, let me thank you for being here. Ask you once again to please consider subscribing to this channel like this video, comment on this video, share this video. It helps mm -hmm. feed the algorithm, I'm trying to grow the audience, trying to get this message out to as many parents, caring and concerned teachers, caregivers, taxpayers in general, anybody interested in school choice and education um, is my audience. So thank you for helping promote the channel. So first suggestion that came through was, uh, what about the left's favorite guy, Karl Marx? Yes, what about him? Now, at the risk of sounding like a hypocrite, I'm not going to say because Karl Marx was a filthy, lousy, layabout, misogynistic pig and, um, you know, abuser, we shouldn't listen to his, you know, we shouldn't listen to his ideas. That would be hypocritical. I would be going back, looking at his lousy character and saying, because of that, we have to throw away everything he ever wrote, everything he ever said. That's illogical. Now, it may be true that he was all those things, and it may be true that his ideas are terrible, but that's not why they're terrible any more than George Washington's ownership of slaves via his wife or Thomas Jefferson's ownership of slaves or any of their, by today's standards, racist views mean we throw out all of their ideas. We still have to judge their ideas on the merits. It's a logical fallacy to throw it out when it's the guys we like. So it's also a logical fallacy to throw it out when it's the guys we don't like. But it is, as I said, noteworthy that they're so quick to use broken logic to throw out the people who represent you know, classically liberal values like freedom of speech, individual liberty, um, limited government, free markets, private property ownership. Very quick, toss those guys away because of, you know, some th bad things that don't work by today's standards. But they're not even talking about Karl Marx, right? Or Mao. Hitler gets a nod. Yeah, they do talk about Hitler. But I think they do in particular because... Most people are poorly educated about Hitler. They think of him as right wing. They forget the socialist part of the national socialist tag. So, you know, it's an inconvenient fact. Just toss that. He's right wing. No, not really. No, he's not. But I mean, in some respects, very authoritarian when it comes to social issues, definitely. But economically, no, no. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, national socialist. So he gets the nod every now and again because then they get to talk about everybody being compared to Hitler. Um, but but not the communists, not Stalin, not Mao, not Che Guevara, who was himself an executioner. People walk around with his face on t-shirts all the time. Doesn't seem to bother anyone that he slaughtered men, women, and children indiscriminately by his own hand, probably thousands of people. And then, like I said, you know, Mao responsible for what? I don't know, at least 100 million deaths. And you've got Stalin. Yeah, he's got quite a few to rack up, maybe 20 million. I mean, lots of bodies, lots of bodies, not just bad ideas, not just, you know, Decent guy, but owns slaves. No, no, no. We're talking murderers, murderers who happen to espouse the Marxist, Leninist, communist beliefs of many of the teachers who are canceling our founders. So, uh, but like I said, let's judge them on the merits. Well, there are no merits to Marxism. It enslaves the individual. There is no value to the individual. None. The individual is just one of many. He's part of the people, the, you know, labor, if you will. There's no such thing. The individual has no worth. Once you decide that the individual's labor and time and product of his industry belong to the collective, then he becomes, he or she becomes disposable. Because when they no longer are able to do that, what value do they have? We don't see any intrinsic value to life. And of course, the history shows that that bears out, that that value bears out because look at all the slaughter. Also, 
because Marx didn't leave any kind of how-to for implementing his lovely philosophy, people have had to interpret it. And every single time they've had to interpret it and put it into practice in the real world, not the world of Karl Marx sitting around in a sofa while his poor beleaguered wife brought him food and bonbons or his mistress or his mother. Okay, no, he never had to actually produce anything or do anything. At least Thomas Jefferson and George Washington were both, you know, farmers. They employed people, not just slaves that they fed and took care of and employed, but also actual paid servants and others. And there were people in the towns where they lived who made, you know, their living because of the industry of these men and the risks they took. They actually went out and put their lives on the line uh, to build a new country. They created a document, the first Declaration of Independence, then the Constitution of the United States, that were aspirational, to be sure. They didn't instantly live up to these ideals. But what did Karl Marx do for humanity while he lived? What really, what did he do? He wrote down a bunch of emotionally satisfying ideas that people who want to live like he did, basically doing nothing and having everybody else be to blame for the problems and responsible for taking care of them and keeping them alive, you know, would love to read and feel like, yes, this is how the world should work. No idea how to make that happen because he had no idea how the world worked because he never had to actually go out there and do anything in it. So on the merits, the man was a poor person to, you know, learn from as far as like, ooh, how should we order human existence by this guy's ideas? Okay. So not a great role model in and of himself. And his ideas are just ideas. They are not connected to anything in reality. They, he never contextualized them. He never put them in the actual world of work and human motivations and, you know, any of it, incentives, nothing. You just completely disregarded all of that and created a little utopia in his head and said, oh yeah, have fun with that. So his ideas fall apart, but we don't get to talk about that or look at it because we're not even looking backwards at those people. And why is that? Well, I just hinted at it, didn't I? He and all the other murderous people who tried to implement his ideas don't represent the things that Thomas Jefferson and George Washington and Abraham Lincoln represent, even if they were not perfect in their, you know, in their time, as far as their ability to make it happen for everyone. They don't represent individual liberty. They don't, they don't champion anything to do with the individual. They don't put us all in groups. This is not who they were. So we have to cancel them. We have to demonize them because in so doing and in erasing their history and erasing them as good people to follow, it will be that much easier to scrub the very idea of individualism from our consciousness. We can wake up one day and be alive in, you know, Anthem by Ayn Rand, where the word I itself is forbidden. There's no such thing. I think some of these people will like that. I really do. Um, for you anyway, not for them, for you, for everyone but them, because they all think it's not going to be them. It's just going to be all the people that bother them, all the people who have ideas they don't like, all the people who threaten their perfect little utopian vision, the ones who start speaking and they go, la, 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 la. Well, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and et cetera are those people for them. They are the people who represent ideas that make the teachers of this, you know, revisionist history stick their fingers in their ears and go, la, 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 I don't want to hear it. You're damaging my view of the way the world should work. You're taking away my scapegoat. You are making me face the fact that my ideas have no basis in reality. And that makes me very uncomfortable and I can't deal with it because my ego is so fragile. I will literally, I don't know, spontaneously combust if I have to accept any of this. So must make you stop, must make you shut up, must make these ideas go away. You know, picture like a toddler who doesn't want to be disciplined or doesn't want to be told what reality is, screaming at you and stomping their feet. That's what these people are. They're not, like I said before, they don't genuinely care about whether Thomas Jefferson owned slaves or not. No, 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 they don't. They just are looking desperately for some way to impugn the people who represent the ideas they're trying to kill. That's it. And that's all it is. It's not about looking back in history and finding fault with everyone. They do it even today. As I said in my last video, they do, you know, they're not interested in looking back at every single historical figure who's become famous or important and saying, here are all the flaws with them. At least they'd be consistent in their fallacious arguments if they were doing that, but they're not. They're making fallacious arguments in only one little narrow area. 
And that's how you know it's agenda-driven. That's how you know it's intentional. You know it has nothing to do even with their own confusion or their inability to argue persuasively or anything like that. No, it is being done intentionally. So my final message to you is, please stop giving people like this credit for just being ignorant, just being, you know, uh, blind or poorly educated or something like that. No, stop it. I know we talk about, you know, don't never attribute to malice that which could be explained by stupidity. Okay. Maybe true for most, but we're talking about teachers here. We're talking about people who, if it's true, if it's true that they're just ignorant, then why are they teachers? Do you want those people in the classroom with your child? I should hope not. So they're teachers. They ought to know better. They ought to be able to think critically themselves. How can someone who can't think critically go into a room and teach your child how to do it? Answer, they can't. You kind of have to know how to do a thing before you can teach it. In fact, that's how you know you really know it is when you can teach it to someone else. Otherwise, no, you don't really know it. You're just regurgitating. You're an indoctrinated boob regurgitating to make other indoctrinated boobs. Let's have your child not be one of those boobs. Get them away from these people. Show them what that people are flawed. We're all flawed. We all make mistakes, but intentions do matter. I know that Nicole Hannah-Jones of the 1619 Project and the New York Times would prefer that we not think that, but um, it's true. They do matter. They do matter in terms of whether they lead to execution of good ideas and propagation of good ideas, or they don't, okay? So you can say all day long, well, well, Karl Marx never intended for his ideas to be adopted by murderous you know, dictators. Okay, but they were. What did he intend exactly? Do we even know? We know what George Washington and Thomas Jefferson intended. They intended to make a free country a better country than England, which was a lot more repressive than here. And they succeeded. They succeeded. The slavery part took a while to get rid of, but the documents were aspirational. So the intention does matter, especially when it's a good intention. You, I do believe we should teach our kids to assume benign intent when having discussions or learning even about history. And only when you find evidence of malicious intent do you proceed, okay? And then you have to judge on the execution because intentions aren't everything. They do matter, but they're not everything. Execution does supersede intention. So you can't just go, but I meant well, I meant well. That's what every leftist says when they look at the stacks of bodies. But it was really, it was for the good of all. We really, we meant well as for the common good. Okay, we'll tell that to the 20 million who are dead. They don't feel like their good was served. So yes, it matters, but it's not everything. Anyway, I just wanted to add that because I don't think enough of you are aware yet or accepting the fact that there is an agenda behind this. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's not. It's not at all. It's just accepting the political reality that ideas have consequences. Ideas matter. And when you teach a certain set of ideas and not any competing ideas, and you're very careful to selectively demonize the holders of the ideas you want to go away, you clearly have an, an agenda. Nobody does that by accident, okay? So, you know, it's, like I said, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's, it's just what's happening. Just look at the evidence. It's right there. And you shouldn't expose your children to that because it's not learning they're not learning anything. You can sit there all day long and rationalize it, but they did own slaves and that wasn't a good idea and they shouldn't have done that. By today's standards, no, they shouldn't have. But by the standards of 250 years ago, um, okay, yeah, yeah, they shouldn't have done it. So you want to get in the time machine and go back and tell them not to do it? Or do you want to accept the fact that we've come a long way since then and maybe we should move on? Maybe we should look at the good they did do and maybe you should look at the fact that we're sitting here having this conversation in part because of that good, because, because they did those things. Yeah, we're able to actually be alive and living here in this country. And having these free conversations without somebody interrupting us and telling us we have to go to jail now. Yet. Anyway, that's it. I just wanted to add that. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.